I've come down to Lodge Hill Stables and to Dan Skelton Racing as brothers Dan and Harry prepare their powerful squad of Cheltenham superstars for the big blue ribbon event the Cheltenham Festival hopes, including the Betway Queen Mother Champion Chase, the Ryanair Chase and Protectorat in the Cheltenham Gold Cup. I think this year we're probably we're level headed um, because we know how hard it's going to be but we are excited about it um, and I think we're entitled to be this year we've got some real strength actually um, but you try not to get carried away with yourself you know it's a race the horses don't know that it's a Cheltenham festival mm. um, and it is in terms of competitiveness it you know you, you, you it's hard to put a number on it but it is much higher than a than any other day of the year so it's going to be hard but you can't just jump up and down and go oh, I want better horses we want better horses we're going to compete in better races it doesn't work like that you have to have a strategy to achieve and we've we've done that a, a number of different ways there is a certain element of needing a big number of horses though mm -hmm. um, you know with quantity will come quality in a, in a, in a weird and, and, and sort of very linked way as I'm sure you can imagine but trying to pick your best horses at a very early age and underrace them as a young horse to ensure that they get to be the best they can be it's probably the biggest you know the biggest thing we've done um, you need the trust of the owners to do that you need a good team around you that can actually carry out that um, uh, carry out that program if you like um, but it's you know just because you're doing well now doesn't mean that you get a you get a new group of horses in two years time you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a fresh start, you've got to do it all again. Um, so it's, it's, it's cyclical, you've got to keep going. I think it's the strongest team we've got going, um, you know, going there for sure, that we've had from the past. So, um, no, I think, you know, going into, going into the meeting, um, we've got a select bunch, um, but I, th I, feel, I do feel that they've all got, you know, respectable chances. The fact that the Irish are dominating so much at the Cheltenham Festival, particularly last year, in the lead-up this year, do you think it's going to be a similar story or do you think the British have got more of a chance of, of making an impact, and particularly yourself? I think we've got a bit more of a chance this year of, of, of not having quite as hard a drubbing, <laughs> but it's still going. they're still going to win. Don't make no mistakes. We ain't turning this round in a, in a year. Um, this is going to take time to level itself out. And I actually don't think it would be a good thing if we ended up having an English dominance, you know, just switching it all the way over. Not that, by the way, that's going to happen or that anyone can predict that's happening because I'm as aware as every man that, you know, that isn't on the horizon at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that to have somewhere near, you know, comparable strength that would be healthy for the whole industry. Um, and I don't really think that this should become an England versus Ireland thing other than just for Cheltenham because it's an extra talking point it's a bit of fun and everything else but this shouldn't be an England versus Ireland thing because we're an industry together we need to stand together we're far too easy to get attacked uh, by all different types of groups and on all different types of subjects mm -hmm. you know to then all of a all of a sudden have this England Ireland divide it's not good you know let's have let, let's have a bit of a let's have a bit of a scrap just for Cheltenham but I think generally overall we've we, we've got to be careful we don't put a divide in there um, you know, we're stronger together, really. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Let's talk about the horses themselves for Cheltenham. If we can start with Protector Act for the big one, the Blue Ribbon event, which is the Gold Cup. Apart from anything else, it must be quite thrilling to have a horse with such a big chance in the biggest race of them all. Yeah, and, and you're not the first person to say that. And, and, and I think that's... I, I don't want to become a sort of a touchy-feely you know, touchy-feely on the subject and say isn't it great that we've got a contender but actually I'd be lying if I said isn't it great that we've got a big contender <laughs> um, you know I'm a professional and a contender's great but winning is what it's about but you know you do take some satisfaction from the fact that you're getting it right to the degree that you're getting a horse like there a horse like that there thought of in such a way it's going to be really hard but I actually think it's a great uh, Gold Cup to have a contender in because there's no standout horse. Every time a race is run over three miles at the top level, you get a different winner at the moment. Um, everyone's throwing their hat in the ring. Um, we're a fresh horse, we've thrown our hat in the ring. 
I think you'll stay the trip. There's never any absolute certainty that you stay the Gold Cup trip until you've done it. Um, you know, one man in Florida Pearl tell you that, but I think he will. We've seen horses like Nella Indo, like Aplutar recently, like Galvin. They've all had quite tough races in the lead up to Cheltenham. You just said Protectorat's had a nice break. Do you think that's going to help him? Yes, for him. Does it help the others that they've run? Perhaps you'd have to ask their trainers. It's just the way that we decided to do this, and I'm really happy that we've decided to do it, and I'm really happy with the shape he's in. You saw those horses today that we've kept fresh, Nuba Negra, Chamblou, too friendly. You see how they look in their coats. Like, the team have worked extraordinarily hard, just like all the other teams out there have, by the way. But we've got them where we want them. Do you know what I mean? We've, we've, we've picked them out, we've chosen them, we've targeted them, and, and it looks like we're, we're just prepping and timing the right time. So yeah. I'm really happy with that. One thing that really struck me about Protector at Aintree was the fact that, correct me if I'm wrong, but he looked very keen in the early part of this race. And I thought there's no way in this kind of ground he's going to stay or win. And he just kept going further and further clear. Um, that would probably make you think that the three mile two and a half Cheltenham trip is going to be absolutely fine for him. Would that keenness that he showed there worry you a touch if he showed it again? There's no point saying it wouldn't, um, but I took him to Warwick last week for Racecourse Gallop and he didn't, he didn't show any unnecessary exuberance. He was happy and you know he was bright to be there and mm -hmm. you know he flicked his leads a few times and sort of hung out on the bend a couple of times, just being a little bit sort of you know full of life and exuberance, but. It's a gold cup. They're going to go a gallop. You know what I mean? They're going to have to be sharp. Um, so no, it doesn't worry. It doesn't over worry me. But it, you're quite right to say that you know it's a thing. It exists. It is there. But I think we've got him in a position where it's at the back of our minds rather than the front of our minds. Um, and as regards him staying and, and, and galloping, I just don't think it really occurs to him what he's galloping on or what the distance is. He just keeps going. He's a very very simple horse. Um, Undulations don't concern him, ground doesn't necessarily concern him, the softer it gets, probably the better. So you know, I think we're in quite a good, quite good shape from, yeah, from that perspective, but yeah, it's a gold cup at the end of the day. It's it, you know, high achievers, trained by extraordinary horse men and women, you know, ridden by the best. It's, 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 you know, to pull it off is, is, would be remarkable. It's a, it's, a, it's a lifetime achievement to win a race like that. He's an improving horse. What you need really for, for the Gold Cup, that it's, a lot of the Gold Cup winners have sort of won it on their first first start um, or their second. It's hard after that. Um, so he fits into that. He ticks a lot of boxes. We've always seen him as a good, strong stayer. Um, yes, we saw him at, at Aintree's still a little bit keen, um, but we know um, that he can, he, you know, when when he kicks in, um, stamina comes to the fore and um, he can stay. So um, three mile two round Cheltenham, we don't see there's any problem. Back in the paddy power over sort of the last half a mile, um, I was in top gear. I just I couldn't get going um, really until I jumped the last and then hit rising ground and he, he flew home. Um, so yeah, I don't see the trip as any problem. And to be honest, if it rained the night before, I'd be even happier. Something you don't do is shy away from, from the big challenges, do you? It, you know, protect right, you could easily have gone for an easier assignment, but you think, no, let's throw him in the big one. Yeah, quite right. You got it. You know, you owe it to your owners, uh, you owe it to your owners, you owe it to the horse themselves, you owe it to yourself to give yourself that chance, you owe it to the industry to, 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 to make a good race if you can. Um, and ultimately, if you've got good horses and you crave good horses, you've got to run them in the best races. You're not always going to win, you know. You look back at the horses like Hurricane Fly, and you know even what um, even what Honeysuckle's doing at the moment. That's not actually the real world. That winning and winning and continuing to win. And, you know, that that's that's dream world. Mm. You know, it, the reality is is that if you've got a really really good horse, you may win a Grade One, and then you may get beaten too. Um, but there's no uh, there's no disrespect. You know, there's there's no shame in getting beaten. Um, you get beat. You, you learn from getting beat. You, you then got to pick up and go again. And I think it's it's important to remember that you, you've you've got to you've got to be brave. Yeah, you definitely do. You're being brave with Nube Negra because that looks a frighteningly hot race this year. But second in the race last year, he looked to improve to me in the Schler Chase. Not quite so good next time at Sandown, but he's had a long break since you say he goes best fresh. Yeah. And how confident do you feel about his chance? I mean, if it was a 
<laughs> if it was perhaps any other <laughs> champion chase than this one, I'd be crowing, but like uh, Shishkin and Anergamine. You've on picked a bad number. year. Oh, I mean, <laughs> you know, what would Denman have been without Keda Star there at the time? And, you know, but he still, he still had his days. He still won his Gold Cup. He still won all those big races. And, you know, we just got to, we just got to do our best and have him there in the best shape and hope it's our turn. Um, I haven't got any negatives at all. He's a very fast horse. He's suited by the track. You know, dry ground will be, the better the ground, the better his chance. Simple as that. Um, he's fresh. He has to be fresh. To have, a, have his best chance, he has to be fresh. So, you know, it was never in doubt that he was just going to go straight there. But, um, yeah, those, those others don't worry me because what's the point in getting worried about them? But I know they're going to be hard to beat. He is definitely best off the back of a long break. Um, he won the Schleur very well and was second in last year's champion chase. So, um, yes, we've got a, a mighty task in front of us. <laughs> we make no mistake of that, but um, it's horse racing. You never know what might happen. I think that um, Shishkin and, and, and Ergami certainly had a hard enough race at Ascot. So is an Ergami slightly better right-handed? He hasn't run left-handed very much before. You know, so you're just trying to find uh, little. Um, there's only little margins in these races that that you can find. So, look, we'll do our homework. But yeah, I mean, there'll be a fast run pace up front for sure. Let's see how it pans out. But our horse can travel at a good, strong pace, and that's what he likes. I said last year, and I was absolutely certain when I said it, he would be the fastest from turning into the line, and he was. Mm -hmm. He just failed by a neck or whatever. He was unlucky, wasn't he? He w was a bit, yeah. He was a bit unlucky. But, like, I said last year he'd be the fastest from turning into the line. I, I could say that again this year, but I would be less certain about that comment this year with those horses in there than I was last year. But he's still fast. <laughs> <laughs> Another horse who's very fast is Shan Blue. Not seen him since his unlucky tumble at Weatherby in the Charlie Hall. It's a nice break since then. How's he doing? Really well. I'm delighted with how he looks. His preparation's been fantastic. Uh, done loads of jumping with him. I, I'm. I, he 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 really has got a lot going for him. That horse. It's unfinished business at the top level. He's a fresh horse, which I think suits him. He's he's won fresh. I think nearly every time. Three three out of three maybe. Novice hurdle. Novice chase. No, two, two out of three. He's just coming together now. It's all just starting to drop into place for him very nicely, physically. There'll be no excuses. I think the race is going to cut up behind him and Alaho. I think Conflated goes there from what I can read recently. So he's a grade one winner, so he's got to be taken seriously. Um, but I think the race could cut up a fraction. He's dropping back in trip from that three miles one at Weatherby. Do you think that's going to be absolutely fine for him? He's got plenty of pace. We've seen that in the past. Yeah. Um, and when you work, if you uh, we have worked him a couple of times with Protector App, and I know I'm doing the right thing based on that, because mm. over three mile two Protector App will outstay him, mm. um, and over two mile five I think Shan Blue will be faster than Protector App. So in that regard, that's what I'm working. That's what I'm working on, um, and I've been as open with the owners about it. I've said that. You know, look, if you want my advice and what I've seen, this is what we're doing. And Colin was always very keen to to take in the shorter trip with um, with Chamblou this year anyway. Um, and I'd never really dream of running Protector out with two mile five unless it was heavy again. Mm. He's got a very exploitable handicap, Mark. It would be a penalty kick, you'd think, in, in, a, in a handicap like the plate or something of that ilk. But you don't want to do that, do you? You want to go for the big one. It's not even a penalty kick either, though, because like 20 runners and what could go wrong? And, and you know, we he's a grade one us. He's obviously got to step up um, uh, again, probably, um, taking on the likes of Alaho, but um, what he was about to do in, in the Charlie Hall against some good horses was very impressive. If I didn't think he was a player in the, in, in, in the Ryanair, he'd have been going in the plate, but mm. I, think he, I really, really think he is. And I don't think what you were going to see at um, Weatherby was a, was a fluke. I, don't, I think that was the real, that was what you were seeing. That, I think that's true. Let's talk about another horse in the Grey Ones, the Triumph Hurdle and Dr Parnassus, a horse who's done nothing wrong recently, been very impressive in his two starts over hurdles. He takes on another likely to be very strong field, but he looks pretty excited himself. Yeah, and this is a good triumph. I'm sure this is a good triumph. Um, he's a hardy, tough horse, though, the trip. You know, you've got to stay hard to win the triumph, and he'll, he will do that. Um, he's, got a, you know, he's got a little bit of flat speed, which is standing in good stead. 
doesn't mind the hurdles and the ground can be what it wants just whether he's good enough and, mm. and you know it's a, it's a very very strong year I feel. Have you been surprised by how good he's looked? It, uh, no not no I've not um, because I always felt that he was a really trainable juvenile who would do well um, I've not tested him at a really top end yet and that'll tell us like is he winning those races and that's as far as he could be winning them anyway or could he actually be 15, 20 lengths better. I, I don't know. Uh, you've got to run to find out. But like I said to his owner, David, I said, what can you ask? For? All you can ask for is a contender, and he's a contender. Um, and and that's, as, that's as much as I can give you at the moment. Uh, you know, if Pied Piper, if what you saw with Pied Piper is the real, if that's true, for, for, why are we turning up, you know? Mm. But there's a little bit of doubt about what happened behind him that day. You know, the betting would suggest that, because if it was true, it'd be odds on. Mm. Yeah, um, be, yeah. So I think it's a very, very deep race. I, I think it's a great race. He's done everything we've asked of him. Um, how strong them races have been, I don't know. But um, he couldn't have done them no easy. You know, he couldn't have done it any easier. Um, one thing that won't phase this horse is the day, the race. He's he's as hard as nails. Um, and to be honest, I. I would see him as a proper hurdler rather than sort of a chaser in the making and a big raw baby that sometimes, when I, when I say that, I mean, you know, an unfurnished four-year-old, this, this lad's ready-made and, um, you know, the day won't bother him and the race won't bother him. So um, he's a tough horse and, yeah, hopefully he can improve a bit more and um, give the Irish something to think about. Yeah, and often that toughness is what you need, though, isn't it, in a triumph hurdle like that? And you saw Pied Piper just winning as he likes, but not necessarily, I mean, it's yet to be proven, but he might not be the toughest, whereas in a race at the Charlton Festival, that really helps you. You can do it at least, can't it? Yeah, it can. Um, and that's what I mean. He's, you know, he's had plenty of runs on the flat. He's battle hardened. Um, he knows how to win now. And yeah, he's he's a good horse and mm. he, he's got to improve. He, he, he's got to improve. Um, but there's no reason to think that he wouldn't. Another horse you got uh, going for a graded race, not grade one, but grade two, is uh, Nurse Susan and the Mayor's Novice. What kind of a chance would you give her? I don't think there's much between her and Ellie Bell. And, and Ellie Bell's going to wait and go to Aintry. I think she wants two and a half. I'm absolutely sure of that. And Ellie Bell would have to give away the penalty uh, because it's a grade two, not a grade one, um, which perhaps in the future needs addressing for that race. Um, but I don't think there's much in between them. And, and Nurse Susan won on the bridle twice, knew nothing about racing for her first two runs because she just was so superior to her opposition. She had a first race of her life when Love Envoy proved too difficult to catch at, at Lingfield. But if you go back and watch that, she's cantering all over her, um, turning in. We just don't have the experience. Maybe we didn't have the ability to go past her. Time will tell. I've got a lot of respect for Love Envoy. I think she's a super, an outstanding mare, especially on soft ground. And what she did at Sandown was afterwards you know, confirmed the form and, and almost looked a bit of a unique performance. So I've got a lot of faith in, in our horse. She's blossomed just recently. She, she, she took Lingfield quite personally. You know, she put a lot of effort into that and she come out of it. She dropped a bit of weight and, you know, for, for 10 days, you could tell she'd, she'd race, but since then she's, you know, she's taken the positives out of that run and, and really come forward. Um, I don't think she'd be far away. And there's a few others uh, throughout the meeting, Nurse Susan, Bally Griffin Cottage, and plenty in the handicaps. If you had to nominate one other one that you're looking forward to particularly, uh, which would it be? I think Bally Griffin Cottage has got a good chance just because he's the sort of horse that runs very well in that race. He's seven years old, he's had plenty of experience, he's hard, he stays really well. You know, there might be something a little bit more fancy in the race if you like um a little bit more maybe um a bit more untapped potential but um one thing with this lad is he'll stay um that's what you need for this race so um yeah i think he's got a good each way chance some races doesn't matter if they're at the cheltenham festival or wherever they are some races suit a particular type of horse this horse has an absolutely perfect profile for this race he's a year older than most of them He's hardy, he's had a load of experience in point to points, stays three miles like it's a walk in the park, goes on soft ground. I, the only unanswered, unanswered question with him is, is the class angle. Of course, we've never tried him at, uh, you know, in a grade one, and he did run very well when we asked him to run in a grade two at Cheltenham um, in December. But 
we've never run him over two and a half miles and I can't say to you, do you know what, we've run this horse over two and a half miles, he's got the pace to do that but he also stays three all day. You know, from three out to, to the last, you know, is he going to be under pressure or is he still going to be travelling? I, I don't know. Um, I'd love to say he had that little bit of that little bit of pace, that little bit of class that, that, that you could run him at two and a half miles and you'd be really comfortable coming down the hill. Mm. And if that does happen, I think he's a real stayer because if he gets to the bottom of the hill in good shape, you can guarantee he's going to come up it. Yeah. Um, he's just got a good profile for it, really. Yeah, he's got that pointing experience too, which is going to help. Yeah, and he races lazy. You know, at the start of the race, he races lazy. So he's never going to be giving, you know, he's never going to be using fuel in the first mile. We all know you've got a fine record in the county handicap hurdle in the past. West Cork, probably your main hope for that race. A horse who impressed a lot of people and a lot of people with your training performance when he won the Greatwood after such a long time off. Had an excuse last time. Do you feel he is the, the same kind of type that you've had that's won the race in the past? Yeah, I got asked that earlier on, actually, and I think he's more like Chittibello than any of the others. He hasn't got the speed of Superb Story, and I don't think he's got the like X-flat class of, of Mahayed. Obviously, West Court come from the point-to-point -point field, so he's a completely different horse in that regard. But he, he's a little bit like Chittibello in that he's he's got the ability to travel well at two miles, but also see it out well. Um, I think almost what happened at Ascot could be looked at as a blessing in disguise that meant he couldn't run afterwards. He, I think he, he overreached that day. Um, luckily it was, it looked severe, but luckily it was weirdly pain free and, and it didn't really hold us up that much. Um, but not being able to run him may have just been a weird little blessing and he was going to bounce that day anyway. Um, when you watch the race back, you watch him two out where he overreaches. I think he was also just about coming to the end of uh, of his performance. I think he's very good fresh. I think he's better on the Friday's course than the Tuesday's course. I have to think that, mm -hmm. given his style of racing. Um, he's still well handicapped. I'm sure he's a graded horse. Um, you know, I said that before Asker, and I'm not going to change my mind now. And I think he's, yeah, I think he's a real, real player. I'm delighted to have him there in the shape he's in. And um, I learned a lot about training him in the autumn, which meant that we can train him properly for this because you know that both are off pretty good gaps. I've always noticed a glint in your eye whenever you talk about Langadan, and there's got to be a big pot one with him at some point. Do you think this is the year in the Martin Pipe? It could be, could be the one. Could be, could be. He had a hold up at the start of the year. He had, he just had a sprain in his high suspensory. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a hole or anything that meant he was going to miss a season. It just meant we were going to have to start a bit slower. And I said to Colm all along, like, I never felt under pressure as such, but I knew that every day had to go well. I knew we couldn't have a hold up, and that remains the case. He had to go to Taunton, and you could say, yeah, well, he finished last, but. I'd love to finish a bit closer up, there's no point in me pretending I wouldn't, but I knew that two miles around Taunton was going to be too sharp, but I had to get a run into him, and there was nowhere else at that, the exact time I needed to do it that was suitable. So the timing was good, he's come out of the race so well, like that's the biggest positive I can take from it. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, over two miles, you have to drop him in, so to try and get up to the front of a two mile race around Taunton with a horse that wants further, it was always going to be hard. but. The way he's come out of the race gives me real positivity. Um, and I said to, as much to Colm the whole way through, I said, look, the betting suggests that this horse is going to be favourite. And I said, but it, it ain't going to be as easy as that, Colm. You know, and he understood and he embraced that. And you know, we've, we've had to almost go a different road to Rome with him. But it, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's, it's now a problem. Um, it's so important that he came out of Taunton the way he did. Without that, we'd have been backs against the wall, but he's thrived. Yeah, I can see the confidence now. Yeah, it's there now. I mean, I, if you'd have asked me a week ago, I'd have, and I, I was very open. I said, look, it's it's fine and it's going okay, but it's got to keep going okay. And there was a there was a percentage of, it's, it's going okay, only okay. I'm only going to use the words okay. But yeah. now all of a sudden I'm like, okay, this is better than, than that. You made me chuckle a bit earlier when you said, if Spirit of the Games won, it would almost mean more to Dan Skelton Racing than if anything else won. <laughs> um, he wants to go for the plate. Whether or not he does is a different yeah. matter, but the Ultima is also an option. Yeah, it is. And uh, it, I'll have to gamble, obviously. I want to go to the plate. The plate was before, I'd know. It depends if he gets in. If he gets in, great, we'll give it a go. And the reality is he'll probably run, run really well and find a younger, better handicapped horse or two to, to get in front of him. But hopefully he goes and runs his race. He's a, he's, you know, he's a standing dish in those races. Please, one day.
It doesn't necessarily have to be the plate, but please, one day, can we have one? I'm sure he will get there one day. He has to. <laughs> law of averages, says he. Yeah, exactly. The law of averages says he would, yeah, but uh, you never know. You never know. Anything else in the handicaps you're particularly keen on? Unexpected party. You know, in the coral, he can't go without a mention. Um, a horse that is a novice, an improving novice at that. And, you know, he gets 142 in the race, but which is fine. You'd have preferred 138, but, you know, I'd prefer to definitely get in than be sweating. You know, and having a having somebody with multiple entries keeping mm. me out. Um, he was mighty impressive, at Ascot. Oh, he was, yeah. And he's getting the hang of it. He's getting better and better and better. He's, he's, you know, he got beat at Cheltenham in November because he didn't know enough about the game. Um, he got beat at Weatherby because Harry didn't hear the other one coming, basically, and made a mistake at the last. Like the times he's been beat, he's got an excuse for it, but he made no mistakes at, at uh, Ascot. Like, yeah, he's gone. Got a very upwardly mobile profile. Yeah, as well. and he's got that. He's got a little bit of boot as well. The Coral Cup being on on the Wednesday's course, you can't be a slow horse to win a Coral Cup. You've got to have a bit of boot. You jump two out, and you got to go. Mm. He's got that. You know, he has got that bit of boot. Um, you know, Langer Dan on the on the Wednesday's course would concern me because Langer Dan likes a staying race. Um, yeah, just. Like I say, into your profiles, different profiles, different horses for different races. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's got the right profile for a Coral Cup. You've got one runner likely on the Tuesday. That's going to be too friendly in the Boodles, a horse who I think it's fair to say has got plenty more to come. Yeah, I hope so. He's a high class flat horse. I think he's rated 90 odd on the flat, so a decent flat horse and took well to hurdling. Uh, hasn't run this calendar year. We we just kept him off basically and thought we'll have a productive spring with a bit of luck. Those juveniles that have been in training as well on the flat doesn't hurt them sometimes to just stay away from the course for a little bit, grow up and get a bit stronger and not have the pressure on them. And he went for a gallop to Warwick the other day and went very well. It's a hyper competitive race, isn't it? But he is actually he, he's he's a horse for us running in this race that is quite suited to it. Uh, Nuba Negra finished third in it once. I mean, imagine a horse that finished <laughs> second in a champion chase gets beaten a Boodles. But he's a, he was a chaser in it. Mm. And, and he just, there was some more hurdly types around him. And this, I think we've been placing it three or four times with, with chasing type horses. This horse is nippy and sharp and you know, he's by Camelot. He's got that, bit of, got that bit of boot and he's got that bit of class and he travel well. And I think the race will suit him. It's, you know, he looks tailor made for it. I asked Harry who he thought his best chance of the week was. He said protector at. What would yours be? I think we agree, weirdly, and it's you know it feels a bit stupid and a bit a bit strong to be saying it about a gold cup, but like he got he yeah he just gives you he gives you a good feel about it and it's an open gold cup. Like don't, if it was a year where you got an outstanding you know if it was a year where you had something of Shishkin's not calibre, but of Shishkin's profile in a Gold Cup, I wouldn't be saying that. But I think the fact that it's an open Gold Cup and he's, he's fresh and we're happy with him and everything else, I, I think we're entitled to, to be confident of a big run. Mm. Uh, Champagne corks would certainly be popping here if he won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'd say, I, I, I'd say him, but, you know, I just know that that West Cork, you know, I just know that there's big 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 days in him it wouldn't shock me one iota if he was a grade one chaser um so i'd have to be you'd have to think he's fairly handicapped i'd have to is. think that he's yeah. yeah yeah cheltenham is our olympics it's something that you, you don't get that feeling anywhere else and wherever you ride a winner um the feeling you get when you ride a festival winner is is different um well it's been different for me mm -hmm. um that is for sure the first one was just a relief and then I'm lucky to have had a few more since then and just, yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, I mean, this year, obviously, all the public are going to be back and, you know, it's going to be very, very special and, um, yeah, looking forward to it.